I'm going home for a while. Then don't come back. Here, the divorce papers. I've already signed them. Take them and get the hell out of here. My husband threw them at me. I picked up the scattered papers up and visited an attorney's office. My husband will regret this. I'm Zoe, 28 years old. My husband Noah is two years older than me, and we were being married for a year. I've been working as a freelance graphic designer from home since before my marriage. Noah works as a salesman. A friend of mine introduced us when I was mopping about my fresh breakup two years ago. At the time, I had no intention to start a new relationship, but Noah insisted on hanging out as friends. He supposedly fell in love with me when my friend showed him my pictures. After going out with him on several occasions, I came to know of his affectionate side and eventually fell in love with him. I confessed my feelings to him, and we became an official couple. Then he proposed to me six months later, and we got married. Honey, you're very lucky to be chosen by me. I'm the top salesman at work, and many girls are chasing after me. Noah repeatedly boasted after we got married. He was indeed a good-looking elite businessman, but his saying it out loud was questionable. At the time, I took his arrogance as a charm. I was blinded by love, you know. I love my confident, kind, and manly husband. We don't have kids. But I was fulfilled in my marriage. One year after we got married, I started facing an obstacle. Listen, Zoe, when will you make me happy with the grandchild? It was my mother-in-law, Emma. She started to ask me to get pregnant as soon as possible every time I saw her. Noah and I visited his parents a few times a month since they lived within a 15-minute drive. I had to hear the same question frequently. We are still young, so we want to spend a little more time together. She blatantly gave a loud groan of dismay. You say young, but you're turning thirty soon. I gave you a year to see how things go, and didn't say anything. So that's enough, isn't it? It's about time you had a baby before it gets too hard on you. When I got married, I had Noah right away. Besides, you aren't doing nothing at home, aren't you? She couldn't get used to the idea of working from home, so she didn't recognize my work as work. Anyway, the real reason we didn't want to get pregnant yet was that Noah insisted on being alone for a little longer. What are you saying? I don't work from home. I've told you many times that my salary is the same as Noah's. I'm suspecting that's a lie that he's covering for you. Aren't you just hanging out at home? That's so not true, Noah. Say something. Um. Oh yeah. At times like that, he didn't say anything to help me. He once explained the reason. Mom doesn't really listen to me when I try to explain things to her. It's a waste of time. Just let whatever she says go in one ear and out the other. Still, I was in trouble, so he could have at least defended me a little. Instead. He just lay on the sofa, fiddling with his phone, and made ransom responses. Anyway, whatever you say, you're not busy. You'd better fulfill your role as a wife. If you don't get pregnant by the end of this year, I'll ask you to leave Noah. Excuse me? No excuse. Noah is my only child. I need a daughter-in-law who will leave me a legitimate heir. No, I didn't even look up from this phone. But I was being unreasonably scolded by his mother. I was so angry that I questioned him about it once we were back home. Hun, why didn't you intervene earlier? You need to convince your mom that it's you who want delay having kids. I'm sorry, but she's too old-fashioned. She stuck with the idea of having kids as soon as married. I know. But you could at least try and explain to her. She's the kind of person who never changes my. It's just wasting my energy. I've been telling you from the beginning. Just give her random, appropriate answers. But she said she would ask me to leave you if I don't get pregnant by the end of the year. Don't worry. 
She's just trying to scare you. Look, it's not because she told me to, but I think it's about time for us to start a family. Why don't you want a baby? I don't mind. I just want to enjoy the two of us for now. If we have a baby, you'll be busy that you won't have much time for me. He put me into his arms as he spoke. I thought he was adorable and held him back tightly. He knew the right things to say at home, but when we went to his parents' house, he still didn't protect me from his mother. She even started calling me every day asking if I was pregnant. I was getting sick and tired of her. I had never mentioned to her that it was Noah's idea to delay the pregnancy. I was concerned about causing a family feud, but I ran out of my patience and finally told her about it. However, she denied it once. Is that what you are making him say? There's no way he would say that. Of course not. It's exactly what he tells me. I want to have a baby soon too. Oh. Noah, is that true? Huh? Not exactly. I do want to stay with the two of us, and she agrees with me too. I was stunned. I did agree with him, but if he told her in that context, it sounded like I just lied about wanting a baby soon. Emma glared at me as I expected. You see, you are agreeing with him. Have a baby as soon as possible. Don't keep me waiting forever. It ended up with me being at fault again. When we got home, I asked him why he had to say it like that to his mother. He said he would clarify with her next time, which he never did. I wondered why I had to go through such headaches and felt gloomy around that time. Then I found out why Noah didn't want a baby one day. It was a weekend, and he was out. Once a month. He made plans to go out with his friends. At first, I was just lounging around at home. We were supposed to go and see Emma in the evening, so I was feeling down, thinking about what she would say to me. I decided to go out to distract myself. I felt a little better after shopping for the first time in a while, and was about to take a coffee break. At first, I wasn't sure what my eyes were seeing. There was a woman, her baby. And Noah in the terrace section of the cafe. I quickly hid behind the wall to avoid being seen by him. He and the woman seemed to be having a pleasant conversation, and then he suddenly picked up the baby and cradled it. My mind went blank, and just kept watching the scene in front of me without comprehension. He said he was going out with a friend, and I wondered if she was the friend. I thought I'd be introduced to all of his friends since we got married, but I had never met her. Then I saw him kissing the baby on the cheek. After all the talk about denying the pregnancy, my heart ached to see him looking lovingly at someone else's baby. I began to think that he didn't really love me, and that's why he didn't want to have a baby with me. My sides became blurred with tears. I wondered if he was cheating on me. The thought made my heart ache even more. I took a picture of the three having a pleasant time together. Just as I was about to leave the place, he handed the woman an envelope and stood up. I rushed back home so as not to run into him. He came back fifteen minutes after me. As soon as he did, I questioned him. Hey, hon, you went out with your friend, right? Yup. What's up? Is she your friend too? I showed him the picture I had taken earlier. His face lost color all of the sudden. What? Why do you have this picture? I just happened to find you guys when I was shopping. What's this all about? Explain it to me. Have you been cheating on me? No way. I have not. Then who is this? Also, what the hell was the envelope you handed her at the end? As I continued to question him, he slowly answered with a look of dismay on his face. Well, I was going to tell you sooner or later. You know, I'm pretty popular, right? So, I had a few flings before I met you, and one of them got pregnant. Huh? I was flabbergasted by his confession. 
I found out after we got married. She was already 28 weeks pregnant by the time she told me, and she was determined to have the baby. It was my fault for ignoring her, even though she tried to get in touch with me earlier. She didn't ask for a marriage, but wanted me to recognize the baby. I felt bad for the child to be fatherless, so I acknowledged it. I asked her for a once-a-month visitation right in return. She was also having a hard time financially, so I'm paying her child support. My head spun upon hearing his revelation, and my knees gave out. Honey, are you okay? He quickly rushed to my side, but I refused his touch. Wait a minute, it's a little strange. She was twenty-eight weeks pregnant when we got married. Does that mean you were with her when we were dating? I'm telling you, it's not like that. When we became official, I completely cut ties with her. But we were already seeing each other, right? Yes, but we weren't in a relationship yet. I couldn't believe it. Even though we weren't officially a couple, he was obvious with his intention to become one. Yet he was having the fling on the side. I didn't know what was going to happen to us. So, besides, I never thought she would get pregnant. But you were still acting in a way that got her pregnant. Well, yeah, he mumbled. I had never expected him to be so irresponsible. I was furious that he had never mentioned it, even after a year of marriage. So, since you already have a baby, is that why you don't want to have one with me yet? He flinched once, and then made an awkward smile. No, I want a baby with you at some point. But as I said before, I'm paying child support every month. If we were to have a baby, you might need to take a break from work. If that happens, it's going to be very tight financially. I thought about starting a family with you after I get a raise. I was already beyond angry and was simply dumbfounded. Well then, make sure you tell your mother about this. No way. Yes, I'm the one who's always been blamed by her, and you turned a blind eye. You even made it sound like I didn't want a baby. No, I can't tell my parents that I have a child with another woman. What the hell? That's so selfish. I had unknowingly go along with your selfish ego every time, and was made to feel bad about it. Watch your tone. Are you trying to say you don't like being with my family? I didn't say that. I'm saying that I was unreasonably bland because of you. I don't dislike Emma. What's with your attitude? I've apologized. Why are you still complaining? Don't you forget that you're lucky to be married to an excellent man like me. You're overreacting just because I have a child. Overreacting? That's enough. It's a waste of time talking to you. I want to think about the future, so I'm going back to my parents' house for a while. What the hell? Why would you do that? There's no need for you to think about anything. You're my wife. You're supposed to step out of me. I was amazed by his ideals. How could I so easily accept such a serious matter just because I was his wife? I was also furious that he had been hiding the illegitimate child from his parents. I couldn't forgive him for making me look back in front of Mama, even thought it was his fault. Just because I'm your wife doesn't mean I can accept everything. Anyway, I'm leaving, and while I'm gone, you also need to think about it. As I was about to get up, he got up first and went into the bedroom. He came back with something and threw it at me. Then don't come back here. If you can't accept me for who I am, you're not my wife. Here, the divorce papers. I've already signed them. Take them and get the hell out of here. He threw them at me. What do you mean you've already signed? I could have understood if he asked for a divorce, but the fact that he had already signed. Meant that he had prepared them in advance. I couldn't believe it. He smiled sarcastically and replied, "You never know what's going to happen in life, so you have to be prepared for everything."
Well, I like your appearance, but if you can't accept me, I don't need you anymore. Fortunately, there are many women who threw themselves at me. I just have to choose a good one. In other words, there are plenty of women who can fill the role of my wife. His arrogance pissed me off. I just wanted to calmly think about the future, including the illegitimate child. But not only did he allow me to do so, but told me that there were others to take my place. I had the right to be furious at him for treating me like that. I clutched the divorce papers tightly and glared at him. I didn't think you were such a scumbag. I will give you a divorce as you wish. I'll get my stuff when you're not here. I doubt we will ever see each other again. Goodbye. I ran out of the house. And started to look for a lawyer on my phone. However, I knew that I couldn't contain my anger if I just left at that point. As soon as I got to my parents' house, I reported to my father the whole thing. I took the next day off work to pick up my things. I thought I had a happy marriage. I was so disappointed to realize that I had married such a scumbag that tears welled up. I tried to think it was a blessing to disguise that I got to fight out before wasting many more years and wipe my tears away. When the packing was finished and the mover came to pick them up, I received a call from Noah. Hello, Zoe. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. As soon as I picked up the phone, he apologized frantically. I grinned at the distressed tone of his voice. No way! I can't forgive you. You initiated the divorce anyway. I just gave you what you wanted. No, no, that was just a joke. I mean, I've realized that what I've done, and I'm sorry. You haven't done anything with the divorce papers yet, have you? Of course I have. I've already consulted a lawyer. Let's just forget the divorce and start over. I can't live without you after all. I wanted to laugh at the sound of his despair. I was convinced that he was pushed to the edge of cliff because of my father. That was expected. My father was the CEO of a major client of his company. Noah, in the heat of the moment, must have forgotten all about it when he threw the divorce papers at me. I was thrilled to know that he was being punished. Have you lost the contract of a major client? That's a shame. I can't believe the elite salesman blundered like this. Let's see how he handles it. Right, that's what I'm going to start over with you. There are plenty of women to replace me, aren't there? Good luck finding one. I hung up the phone and enjoyed the feeling of triumph. Later, my father told me that Noah was demoted for losing the contract. I guess he was lucky he wasn't let go. Because of the incident. The company's business had been going downhill, and his co-workers apparently gave him reproachable eyes. He told his parents about the illegitimate child. They were happy at first and tried to have him married to the mother of the child. However, once they found out the woman was very poor, they changed their mind. Noah asked me again to start over, but of course I refused. Who will willingly go back to that mother-in-law and ex-husband? Meanwhile, our divorce was finalized. I have been living at and working from my parents' house. I recently landed a contract with a major company, and my work is going quite well. I'm now devoting myself to work while hoping to meet someone wonderful someday. My husband Ken and I built our family home at the same time when we got married to each other. Our family home is the biggest purchase I ever had in my life. We both decided to cherish our family home together, but I already threw away all of your stuff. Okay? I never thought that our family home would be taken away like this. My husband and I got married three years ago. We built our own family home when we got married, and have been steadily paying for the mortgage. That new smell once you get into the newly built house, and the kind face of my sweet husband, the spacious living room with lots of morning sunlight pouring in through the large windows, was what Ken and I dreamed to have one day. 
Since we were going to build our own house, my husband listened to my opinions as much as possible. Among them, I was particular about the built-in kitchen and the size and the directions of the windows. On Sundays, around 2 p.m., this window lets in just the right amount of sunlight into the room. And with that sunlight, my husband and I lay down and relaxed around the room and even take naps. And once I brew the coffee with these delicious coffee beans, the room is filled with the good aroma of the coffee. This is what I would call my moment of happiness. But to be realistic, it truly costed us a lot to get our blissful moments with our family home. I am just really glad that I have been working properly and consistently. When we were qualified for the mortgage, I patted myself on the back for working hard this whole time. And my husband felt the same, of course. But within a month since our family home was completed, I received a call from my mother-in-law, Pam, who had been living apart from us. You and Ken built a family home, is that right? Well, now that it's completed, I'd like for you to let me live with you both in that house. If I continue to live in this rundown house all by myself, I will get sick. Pam is single, and she's living on her own on welfare. Pam and I were not that close to each other, as I just only went to greet her when I was about to marry Ken. To be honest, it is really difficult for me to have Pam suddenly living with us as a newly wedded couple in our own home. I know you, Anna. And I can see how my mother living with us would be a huge burden to you. So, I'll tell my mother that we can't live with her and refuse. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thankfully, my husband is a man who takes my feelings into consideration and really understands me. So then, my husband had refused Pam about her idea on living with us. And two years later, Ken and I had our first baby. I guess Pam thought that it was a good opportunity for her, so she suggested the idea to live with us again. Isn't it hard to take care of the baby and do the house chores all by yourself? If I get to live with you all, I will definitely help you taking care with the baby and the house chores. And besides, it's a great opportunity, so please let me live with you all. It's true that taking care of the baby and doing all the house chores requires hard work, and I would actually appreciate her if Pam would help us out. Plus, I plan to go back to work eventually, and so it would be better to have more people taking care of the baby. Well, what do you think? I think it might be a good idea to have someone help us out at least. Well, yes. If Pam keeps her word and helps us properly, then... Pam was really delighted when I agreed for her to move in with us on the condition that she would help me with the baby and house chores. Once we began living together, Pam took it very seriously and helped out with the baby and the house chores all on her own. Okay, well, I'll do the laundry and fold the clothes, okay? Thank you. While you're gone for the groceries, I'll look after the baby, okay? Aw, who's a good boy? You are a good boy. Thank you very much. I honestly didn't expect Pam to help me like this. I even felt a little guilty that I underestimated her. She's been really helpful around the house, and I should be really grateful of her. Or so I thought. Pam taking it seriously and helping around the house and taking care of the baby only lasted for about a week. After that, she would just slack off and relax around once my husband was gone, or doesn't even take care of my son even though I asked her to look after him. This happened a lot, and I'm starting to not trust Pam more and more. Pam hasn't been taking the house chores seriously lately, and I can't even ask her to take care of our son, let alone do the housework if she's being like that. I see, alright. I'll talk to my mother about it. 
My husband tried to warn her several times, but she wouldn't really listen to him. You know, I'm doing my best too. Anna is just being too strict here. But you need to help us out properly. That's why we're living together in the first place. What? Are you trying to kick me out? Ugh, please, don't be so cold about it. Ugh, please, don't kick me out because of this. Whenever Ken warned her, she either blamed me or cried to make him feel sorry for her. And so like that, Pam persistently continued to stay at our house. Pam, who no longer helps me raise and take care of our son properly, has also become annoyed with him gradually. Oh, he's crying again. He's so loud. There, there. Hurry up and make him stop crying already. Not only does she not take care of our son, but I feel nothing but anxiety when she is around him. Honey, I'm really afraid to let our son get close to Pam like this. I really want her to leave our home as soon as possible. All right, I understand. I'll get my mother a new place to live on her own so that I can convince her. My husband prepared to rent an apartment so that Pam would easily leave our home. Before I knew it, our living room was full of Pam's stuff. I have to hold our son all the time because it could be really dangerous if he bumps into Pam's stuff or puts them into his mouth. We have already warned Pam enough, but she still won't change her attitude. We will definitely persuade her to leave our home. When I was thinking that, Oh no, he's gone. Why? Our son was missing from his room where he was supposed to be sleeping in. I looked around in a panic and found Pam taking our son outside. What are you doing? How dare you take our son out without our permission? I just wanted to show off my grandchild a little. Do you have any clue how worried I was? If I took him out like this, people will try to maybe share us with something, you know? So you shouldn't worry that much. And you're being too loud shouting like that to me. I just couldn't believe that Pam would take our son out without saying anything to me. And it didn't even look like Pam was guilty about it at all, but instead, she got angry. Hearing the story, my husband got also furious. So, at once, we had Pam leave our home without question. One year has passed since then. Our son had turned one year old and gradually began to walk little by little. Then suddenly, my husband was involved in an accident on his way home from work one day and unfortunately passed away. I was at a loss of words, having lost my husband so suddenly. Why did he have to leave us? What am I going to do with my son who's still small? Even at Ken's funeral, I was so sad that I could not stop crying. Then Pam began to talk to me. Hello, long time no see, Anna. I never thought that we'd see each other again like this. Oh, Pam. For Pam, her own son had passed away. The grief of a mother who has lost her son must be very deep. I should not be the only one crying for Ken like this. I must be strong for him. I answered Pam, trying desperately to hold back my tears. It was really... It was just really so sudden. Indeed. So, since the family house belongs to my son, I'm supposed to get it, right? Huh? Then, could you leave the furnitures too? Excuse me? What is she even saying? I thought we were both grieving the loss of our beloved. But then she started talking about the house, the furnitures, and other things that didn't make sense to me at all. I was just so confused by Pam's words. And even if she said that she would take the house, it costed about $500,000 to build it and there's still the mortgage which needs to be paid. Uh, 
even if that's true, what about the mortgage? Oh, um, well, you are going to pay that, right? Excuse me? What in the world is she saying? I can't believe that Pam would even bring it up at Ken's funeral in the first place. Um, I'm not sure that I want to talk about that right now. We're at Ken's funeral after all. But it's very important that we talk about this anyways. But now's not a good time to... Anyways, I will get the house, right? How could she be so obnoxious? Pam seems to want to get a clear confirmation from me that I would give her our house, but... I was being so sad about Ken, and I was getting so fed up of Pam being like this. That's it. Enough, Pam. We are at Ken's funeral. If you continue to be like this at the funeral, please leave immediately. When I said that strongly, Pam became silent and left my side. What was she really thinking when her own son had passed away? Sometime later, after all the funeral, cremation, and such were over, I was able to calm down for the time being. I can't stay sad forever. I have to do my best and work hard to make a good living for my son. So, I left my child at daycare center and returned to work. My days were very hectic with work, house chores, and taking care of my son. Then one day, when I returned home after picking up my son, I saw all of my belongings being left on the garbage dumpster near the entrance. What is the meaning of this? My clothes, desk, and work things were all piled up in one big dump. But upon looking closely, it seems that my expensive clothes, my expensive accessories, the TV, the huge fridge, and so on, weren't taken out as a garbage. Oh, what a great timing. You live here, right? Well, the cost of this move is... Huh? And then the mover who was there talked to me and charged me a fee for something I couldn't really understand what was going on. Once I listened to what the mover was saying, I found out that Pam was the one who had hired him. What is she trying to do? Was Pam in my house right now? I tried to go inside, but for some reason, the front door would not open. Don't tell me that Pam has even changed the locks already. Maybe Pam had somehow gotten my house key when I was just being too busy with Ken's funeral. I immediately called Pam. What is the meaning of this, Pam? How dare you come into my house without any permission and throw out my stuff without even asking me? What's so wrong of me for taking my own son's stuff? You're not a family anymore, so get out! I beg your pardon? Ken is not here anymore, so you're not a family anymore. Get out before I report you for trespassing! Saying that, Pam just hung up the phone on me. How selfish and messed up she is. I really have to get my house back somehow. But my son began to cry, and I couldn't stay out there forever, so I thought that I'd better go to a hotel or my parents' house. I asked the movers to move my belongings to a storage for the time being, and I left for now. And a week later, I received a phone call from Pam, who sounded really upset. Hey, the police came over here, and it looks like they're trying to make me leave the house. Please do something about it. How could she even say such a thing after she was the one who kicked me out? Pam was being too selfish. Even if you say so, I am not your family anymore, since I've gone through post-mortem divorce settlement. What? Post-mortem divorce? Yes, it's a procedure to terminate the relationship between myself and the relatives of my deceased husband. What? Since I am still Ken's spouse, I will inherit the house. But I have cut ties with you, and I have no obligation to have you living in my house, nor do I owe you any support. Huh? You know that I literally have nothing, and yet you're kicking me out? 
Yes, I did so as you wish, since I'm not your family anymore. But I took care of the baby. You're so ungrateful. And you're just really so cold and strict. Pam didn't sound like she realized what she was doing was wrong, but instead, she got angry. It's not like she didn't take care of my son much. So, I really don't owe her anything. Well, this is the reaction I expected from her, though. If you say that, then, I have no choice. You can live there if you want. Oh, really? You said that I can, right? I can really continue to live here, right? Yes, but instead, please pay the mortgage for the house as a one installment. Excuse me? You don't really have to pay the mortgage, which has already been paid for up until now. You only need to pay for the remaining mortgage. You should know, though, that it's a lot. What the? How could I possibly pay the mortgage on a house that has only been built for three years and for one installment? Well, if you can't then, the house there is mine, and you, who is not my family, should be reported for breaking and entering my house. I told her so and hung up the phone. By the way, since we had insurance, I didn't have to pay for the mortgage anymore when my husband passed away, but I don't really have to tell Pam about that. A few days later, I finally got back into our house. But it was a mess. The furnitures were damaged, and my clothes were all messy too. I took photos of each and every one of them, and documented them, along with how much it all costed when I was kicked out of the house from Pam a few days ago. But even if I file a claim, there's a good chance that it'll be overlooked because Pam definitely would not be able to pay back all the money. But if Pam does anything to me in the future, I will be able to use this to make her shut up. She then contacted me asking me to pay her $1,000 fine for trespassing, but of course, I ignored it. Can't she see that I am the victim here and that there is no way in hell that I would pay that for her? And three years later. In the end, Pam was not able to pay the fines and was found guilty for being malicious and she was imprisoned for three years. Pam, who had completed the three years, contacted me. Um, please, I'm really in trouble. I really don't have a place to go home and I don't know what to do. She seemed to be using a payphone, probably getting money from random people to make calls since it would hang up a few times while she was talking. In the end, it seems that what she is trying to say is that she has no home to go back to. The apartment my husband rented for her previously to make her leave has, of course, been terminated already. And the family home Ken and I built has already been sold as I was afraid of Pam coming back. Well, this is what you deserve, Pam, and I have nothing to do with you anymore. So please stop bothering me and just live your life on your own, please. What? I told her so and hung up the phone on her. Then, I set up the phone so that Pam would not contact me. So that was it for Pam, who has no will to live her own life on her own. I will make sure to raise my own son so well that he could live strongly all on his own. Thinking this, I laid my hands on Ken's photo with my son. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.